This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite plants, and it's known as a milkweed. Now, the thing about this particular plant is all about the flower. Now, look at those flowers. So you get this beautiful yellow, orange, and bits of it is actually a deep maroon. And the thing about it, it flowers all, all the time. So this is known as the blood flower, or else you could call it the Mexican butterfly weed. But I will explain why they call it the Mexican butterfly weed. But look at those colors and the thing about it, it is not fussy about the soil. It is ever flowering. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice. Let's learn how to do a seed production using this flower. Now the thing is, as I showed you, this Mexican butterfly weed, it's such a beautiful flower. And the thing is, is that as I mentioned, is that first of all, is it's so easy to do a seed propagation. And because basically they are known to be evasive, because what happens is when you do go into seed production, such as the flower, goes into seed production, you do end up with a pod like this on one stem. <laughs> So with a pot like this is what I got from the plant I've just shown you in the introduction. Now, apart from that, is that these are just a few of the pods that I received from that plant. Now, what happens is these pods dry and then suddenly as they dry, they pop open and what you get is the silky seed that looks like this. Look at that. And that's what you get in one pod, these silky seeds. And what happens with them is that once the pod opens, they fly and that's how they spread their seeds. So this is actually spread by, wo by wind. And what happens is that if you do get all these pods popping at the same time, you'll get a multitude of these seeds being scattered. And hence, that's why they call it invasive. As they disperse their seeds, they propagate very quickly. Now what I did for seed propagation is I actually took the seeds and just sprinkled, sprinkled it in this container and look at the multitude of seeds I got from one pod. So for propagation purposes, what I did is basically our little milkweed or the Mexican butterfly weed. It's not fussy on the type of soil, but again, well drained, just the normal thing, but they can actually grow in poor soil. So just to show you what I did in this big pot is I got the seeds here. We can see all these seeds is I just simply got them and I just simply scattered them in a container just like that. And then I just poured lightly over it with some soil and this soil I've got is sandy soil. I'm into sandy soil now for drainage purposes. And then what you do is just lightly pour your water, very little here, because with the sandy soil, it will actually spread and just leave it like that. I did not even cover it because it does propagate very quickly. And that is the propagation I did. And with the result, I had all the stock. Now, what am I going to do with the stock? I have a garden in my backyard that I've started, which we will show in the next episode. And so what I'm simply going to do is inter, um, interplant my milkweed in there and let it mix with the colors that I've chosen. Now, the thing is, is that 
first of all, as we know, it is quite invasive. And so basically, once these uh, seeds do disperse, I might end up that the milkweed or the Mexican butterfly weed takes over. Now the trick is when you do get any invasive plants is once it does go to seed production as in this case I would snip these pods off so that you don't get it to go into seed production and the and the seeds within the pod don't disperse so I would go in there and systematically snip them off. Another thing you could do is keep cropping the plant, just getting it and pruning it down. So in this way, you're not having so many flowers happening all at once. And in that way, you can actually control the flowers, the seed production, and it won't take over your garden. Now, the other thing which is very important to actually tell you is basically with this Mexican butterfly weed, it does produce latex. And latex is when you do get the flower and you do get a milk looking um, residue that, uh, that is in the broken stem let's assume. Now the thing is, is that this is quite poisonous so I do recommend that when you do want to do your pruning or picking off the pods do wear your gloves and it is quite toxic to dogs so just be careful. Now the thing is is that as I went back and to tell you why they call it the Mexican butterfly weed is basically because of the monarch butterfly and we all love the monarch butterfly. It flies in from America and lands in Mexico almost in time for their celebration in October. Now what it does is that it particularly, it does like this plant. So what happens, it does lay its eggs and the, you do get the larvae and eventually the larvae turns into butterflies and then again monarch. But basically what people, uh, what a lot of countries are trying to say is that try to introduce the milkweed which because there's so many different variety that is native to your country by introducing a milkweed from another country and it does get invasive it does kill off the local uh, milkweed however with the monarch is that there is a certain bacteria that does affected because of this particular milkweed so we have to do we have to be a bit more careful about what we do but also as i've said before do try to control the pods do try to control the flowers in that way you don't get so much going out there and dispersed as seed and in that way you don't get it as invasive so fellow gardeners that's my favorite plant i am going to be very careful with it but i am planting it at the back and every day i do walk up and down that area so i will look out for my pods and i will keep them down because once you do keep them down they do get bushier and also it does have full sun at the back and sometimes partial sun as the sun is going down is that my milkweed or my blood flower is going to do extremely well and bring me the color that I want in the back and we will follow that. Thank you so much and don't forget to like and share and also press that notification button and subscribe to our channel, introduce it to friends and family because it is important for us. Also do follow us on Instagram, put your comments. I do do a lot of posting these days on Instagram. So you will actually see um, all the plants that I love, all the plants I have inside the house, certain ideas I do have. Do, um, do have a look at Instagram and do send me comments. I always do answer. And even on our Facebook, Red Soul Facebook, do send your comments. Thank you so much and have a lovely afternoon.